it brings me great pleasure this evening to introduce to you the fine narrating talents of Mr. Midnight. Each of us will be bringing you one story in tonight's video, ostensibly based on true events, or at least the protagonist's perception of the truth. As always, I ask you to sit back, relax with your favorite drink, and listen. A Long Walk Home I was 15 and had a boyfriend who lived 8 miles from my house. We used to sneak out and visit each other at night, but since we didn't have cars, we would have to walk. He would walk to my house or I would walk to his. One of these nights, I had visited his place and it was getting late around two or three, so I left. I started down the main road, as usual, and heard a car slow down behind me. I looked to my left and saw an older car pull up next to me. The guy looked young, older than me, but still in his twenties. He asked me if I wanted a ride. I said, no thanks, I'm good. He asked again, and I thought about how I had just started my walk and how much farther I had to go. I thought, fuck it. I jumped in the car, happy to skip the long trek. First thing I noticed while inside was a strong scent of alcohol in the air. It was so strong. He was also staring at me so hard that he swerved and hit a ditch in the side of the road. Watch it, I yelled. I was a smart-ass teenager then. He just gave me a goofy, drunken smile. He was driving really slow too. Not sure why, but out of all the red flags that had presented themselves, it was his super slow driving that bothered me the most. I would like to remind you guys that I was a really naive 15 year old. Up until this point, I was just annoyed with this dude. Nothing more. I had told him to go straight on this road for a few miles when he slowly turned right into a small street. Immediately, I said, Dude! What the fuck are you doing? I said I live that way. We're going to my friend's house. I said, fuck no, take me home. He just ignored me and kept staring at me while driving super slow. I demanded he stop the car and he ignored me again. Pissed off now, I opened my door and jumped out of the moving car. I fell hard and got up and started walking away angrily. He was already out of his car and crossed my path. He clutched my arm so hard and pulled me to his car. He sat in the driver's seat and told me to crawl over him into the passenger. I pulled and yanked, but he was so strong. This is finally when I started getting scared in the situation. He wasn't letting me go and was basically trying to kidnap me. A horrible feeling of dread just washed over me. I was looking at the moon. It looked so big and beautiful. So many nights I had marveled at its beauty and I felt like now it was bearing witness to my demise. I burst out crying. When I did, 
He reflexively loosened his grip on me, and I saw it as a chance to fucking run. I lived in a small town, so we had fields of orchards and crops between residential areas. I broke free from him and ran straight into a cornfield that was right off the road. He yelled at me to stop and started chasing me. The stalks were taller than me, so I ran in zigzags through them, trying to lose him. I lost a boot in that dirt. He was falling farther behind me. After the field ended, there was an abandoned house that sat right next to the road. I banged on the door, hoping that maybe I had only thought it was abandoned. There was no answer. Surrounding the house were flat fields and just the main road. I couldn't take any chances running through those because the moon was so bright that night. I was sure he would have seen me. So, I climbed a huge tree that was in front of the house. So high, just hoping he wouldn't see me. He came out of the cornfield, and I could see him below looking all around for me. I was so terrified, I could only cry as silently as I could, praying that he wouldn't look up. After a while, he gave up and walked back to his car. I thought that was the end of it, but he got in his car and drove up and down the main road looking for me. I was up in the tree so long, I was getting physically tired. I couldn't believe how hard he was looking for me. Sometimes he would get out of the car and look deeper into areas off the road. Then he'd jump back in his car and go up, then down, really fast or really slow. After a few hours, he finally disappeared. Thirty minutes passed without seeing his car, and I decided to head home. Again, because the moon was bright and the fields ahead were low, I literally low-crawled through them scared shitless that he might show up, see me off the main road, and chase me again. When I got home, it was dawn, and I was shoeless and covered in dirt. Grateful to be home still. Needless to say, I never walked the street alone again at night. Let me start by saying that this is not just my paranoia. It can't be. I've been considering posting here for a couple of months now, but I've always decided not to because I figured I was just being the usual unsure first time dad. But now, it's clearly not just my imagination. Like I said, this is my first child. My wife and I weren't even sure that we wanted kids. We dated for six years before getting married and decided to have a kid within a few months of that. After just two months of trying, she was pregnant. My wife handled the pregnancy and birth like a champ. I'd love to brag, but that's not what this is about. My son finally started to smile recently. After six months of waiting, it finally happened. But now, I'm starting to wish he never did. I know this sounds bad, but let me explain. The first few months of parenthood, for those who don't know, can be relatively simple. Assuming your child does not cry relentlessly, you may even forget they're there. My son was a quiet one. My wife and I were fortunate that he wasn't colicky or anything like that. A very quiet, happy, easily entertained child. 
We knew it would be some time before the big milestones, like first words, first steps, you know, things like that. The only real milestone you get, usually within two or three months of being born, is your child's first smile. My wife and I waited what felt like an eternity for it. When he hit the two-month mark, we were forever on the edge of our seats. We both hated going to work, knowing that we could very well be missing his first smile. Any day now, it would come. But it didn't. Three, four, even five months passed, and my son never smiled. We tried everything. Funny faces, tickling, everything we could possibly think of. But the smiles never came. My son is six months old now, and has hit another milestone we were looking forward to. He has full control of his neck and head. Gone are the days of having to hold his head for him constantly. He looks around, observes everything. He's such a curious kid. He looks at everything like he's trying to figure out how it works on the most detailed level possible. But his face is always a blank stare. Well, until a week ago, that is. I'm going to stop for a moment and describe his room. I feel like a visual is important here. When you walk into his room, you're in the far right side of the room. There isn't even a corner there, just the door and the right wall. Along that right wall is his dresser and door to his closet. The wall directly across from you when you enter his room is blank. We've left it empty as we've decided that someday soon we're going to start painting it with things he's interested in. The left wall is where his changing table is, and the back wall, the one with the doorway to his room, that's where his crib is. For the longest time, we never noticed any obscure behavior of his in any room of the house. But at around four months, we noticed he would often glance over at the empty wall. This may not seem odd to you, but remember that there is nothing on that wall. No furniture or anything. Just a solid white wall. And it wasn't just a glance so much as an entranced gaze. We had to really try to steal his attention away from it. Over the next couple of months, it got progressively worse. Even to the point where he was practically breaking his neck to look at this wall. As soon as we'd enter his room to put him to bed or change his diaper, his attention immediately snapped to face the wall. If we stood in the way of his view, he would start crying hysterically. It was like blocking his view of that wall was physically painful for him. We started to get creeped out, but just decided to overlook it. This is the time when I decided to look for advice, but ultimately decided against it. But then, a week ago, he started smiling at the wall. And not just smiling, but laughing. He had done neither up until this point, but after a few seconds of looking at the wall, he begins grinning from ear to ear and begins to giggle. This brings us up to last night, the final straw that made me come to you for advice. In the middle of the night, at 3.13am to be precise, 
we heard his giggle coming through the baby monitor. I rolled over to see what the camera was picking up. At first, I was ecstatic. My son was standing up in his crib. This was amazing. I was so proud. But it ended almost instantly when his giggle quickly grew into an all-out fit of laughter. And he was staring at the wall. Before last night, my son had never stood and never laughed like that. But this wall seems to bring him a level of joy I wish I could take credit for. I know this sounds crazy, but I can't help but think that he sees something we don't, or can't. I don't know what to do. Please help me.